All right, so today I'm gonna to talk about are labels always a bad thing? And particularly labels like narcissism and apply this to whatever comes up for you in this conversation. And the reason I wanted to talk about this is because people teach things online and they can end up being kind of platitudes if you try to superimpose them over your life, whereas your life may be calling something very different from you, right? Sometimes it's important to name something so that you can take appropriate action about it. And I'm going to and I'm going to give you a specific story about this. So, <clears throat> let's say you come from a background where you had a lot of abuse in your life and you were surrounded by people who maybe were in deep denial. Um so I'll give you my my own experience right i was born with a very open heart and um my parents are actually quite um compassionate human beings they um they're of the rehabilitative mindset um please excuse my sniffles i'm uh i am coming back from an intense um retreat that i did last week and there was a lot of energetic purging so um well, my parents were very compassionate people and they, while they always default to wanting to help others, right, the, the shadow side of that is that they also tolerate a lot of abuse, right? So let's say you're in a relationship, let's say you're coming from a situation like that where maybe, you know, maybe even things happened to you as a child and nobody believed you, okay? Maybe you were sexually abused and nobody believed you. And that can really do a number on the psyche because if something is very real to you but nobody's validating it, then you begin to question your sanity. So if that's the case for you, right, and you're an adult now, and now you find yourself in a relationship where you know something's wrong, right? You know, you might be being abused in some way, but but because you're so used to questioning your own sanity and um, defaulting to trying to help someone, maybe being in the savior archetype, which is a shadow archetype, which is a trickster archetype, if you tend to default there, sometimes it can be very helpful to research something like what is clinically and pathologically called narcissism or psychopathy <clears throat> because that helps you validate like yes this is a real pattern that it's real you're not making it up and it's helpful to be able to accept this so that you can actually get yourself away from it so in my life this is something that happened in my life um I was kind of fractured, my psyche was fractured in idiot compassion, and no matter how much abuse I received, I would always default to trying to help the other person instead of helping myself. So the universe started um, sending me like articles about narcissism and other things, and I never Googled that word. Um, I, I don't believe in labels, right? But that's the state of mind. And so, when I learned about it and when I, I spoke to a trauma therapist about it, she said, oh, Alex, this is very real. This is very real. Like you need to, the reason why you keep getting hurt is because you're not acknowledging the reality of it and actually hearing it explained like, yes, this is actually, you know, considered a clinical diagnosis and it has these specific symptoms. It helped me save my own life. So I just wanted to put that out there because not everything applies to everyone. Now, if my ego were to take the word narcissist or psychopath or whatever, and then tell a story about that person who, by the way, I love very dearly and very much. But if I were to try to tell a story about that person that uh, they're a narcissist and they're this and that, well, then that's my ego creating hierarchy, right? You know you're in your ego if you're creating, if the story that you're telling makes you better than someone, like if you're in the energy of trying to convey that you're right, that you're better than someone or less than someone, right? The ego creates hierarchy. When the reality is that, look, we're all God, we're all souls, but 
a person may be showing up in a way that's very, very detrimental to your experience. And sometimes if you come from a background of questioning your sanity and not trusting yourself and not caring for yourself and abandoning yourself, it can be quite important to acknowledge this truth that sometimes it's useful to put a label on something. I have worked with so many people who <clears throat> have been abused and it's so difficult for them to say it out loud. Yes, this has happened. For people to say, yes, I was raped. Yes, I was locked in a room for 12 years. Yes, this is abuse. To be able to call it by name without without using it to hurt someone or to judge someone, but just be able to acknowledge it to yourself can be an extremely important step in order for you to save your own life. So again, right, if we, the ego can get carried away with anything, I'm not validating the use of labels, I'm not condoning it, but I am saying that sometimes it might be important for you to acknowledge to yourself like yes you are dealing with a serious pattern i personally dealt with something that was so deeply confusing to me and to everybody in my life nobody understood it and to this day people will say wow that's hard to believe because things exist in the universe that you know maybe we don't fully understand until something else from the outside comes in and says, look, this is actually real, this is happening, and it would really benefit you to get away from it, All right? And unfortunately, because of our past experiences, it's not so obvious to us that we're in danger when in fact we might be. So then after that, right, after you save your own life and put yourself in a better situation, then you can reflect and say, how did I create this? How do I agree to this still? How did I agree to that? If I attracted that into my life, how did I embody a victim? How am I constantly perceiving that I'm always being attacked, right? If we're empathic, it's very common to constantly perceive like, like we are being attacked when the fact is that we are unattackable if we are sovereign in our energy, if we trust ourselves, if we validate our own intuition. So um, <clears throat> that comes after, right? After you get yourself into a safe environment, you can begin to ask the questions like, how did I align to this? How did I create it? How did, how, did, how did I agree to it? And what patterns of thought do I still have that indicate to me that I am embodying a victim consciousness where I would attract something to validate that perception of myself? If I perceive myself to be a victim, to be attacked, and to be bombarded by my environment, then the universe will send me a teacher to amplify that belief, period, right? But th this is just a message to be soft on yourself. Like, you know, there's a lot of wisdom on the internet <clears throat> and there's a lot of helpful advice and there's a lot of really helpful discussions about what the ego can look like. But I wanna just plant this seed and say, sometimes spiritual logic and being unconditionally loving doesn't mean that you don't acknowledge the way that a pattern is showing up right now. This is part of discernment. And a lot of us need to bring our discernment out of the shadow because it was, it was trained out of us as young children. So if you need to use the word psychopath or, and, and granted, some people are misusing those words, but there is, there, there are people exhibiting those patterns that are very deceptive, um, harmful, destructive, and and for you to just acknowledge it and say, okay, I know what I'm dealing with. Let, let me make the appropriate move, and then have compassion for that person, right? Because if you if you continue telling the story, then you're validating an identity, and you are maintaining a psychic bridge with that being, and whatever is going on in their mind, you are inviting into your experience. So I hope this message is helpful to somebody, and I hope you have a beautiful day.